I have a mate. Uh, oh, oh, it's all still good there. Yes. The meeting is being recorded. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So you guys are my friends over the Zoom link, and I think today's talk behind is very relevant. There's a number of uh, of my guys that are starting to fill in their extra form, so we look forward to that. But before that. I'll do, as you say, uh, another short talk on leadership. And today I'm dealing with a topic that is of utmost importance, and that is how to deal with conflict situations. So I've dealt with many very important principles, but how about this? We can do all those things excellently and fall short on this aspect of conflict and it can break down all the good that we've done. So it would be very important to, to be savvy with these matters and to deal with conflict in a proper manner. Now I have heard that there's a general feeling out there and I can say even internationally, that South African leaders are of the best in the world. And the reason being is that there are many complexities in our country and many different challenges that we face. And as a result, we produce very capable leaders that know how to deal with many different situations. And uh, the one of them is diversity. We have many different cultures and it's important that we keep a harmony and there is a, a mutual respect for the different cultures but at the same time that there's also a unity with the things that make things work. For example, integrity, discipline, hard, uh, I mean, hard working, and all those things that we're well aware of, that those things need to be ingrained in, into our processes. So that's just one example of where we just need to be sensitive and understanding and know how to work with all different kinds of people from all different kinds of situations. And that takes uh, skill and, and, and it takes time to grow and to learn and uh, to, to be good at it. So let's get more into it. Many years ago, I penciled down a statement just to help me in my own leadership and to put this thing forward in thinking when I lead and the importance of it, of how to deal with conflict. And I wrote this, no great accomplishment can be achieved without unity. A wise leader builds with this in mind. And that's something that I've always realized that unity is a incredibly important thing in any team, in any organization and within a country. Because when there's unity, you can achieve most incredible things. But when there's division, it's so much harder and it's so much more difficult to actually get the job done. So with that in mind, let's just think of a few principles that I can talk about over the next few minutes. The first one is, how do we respond to conflict? And I'll define it now, now, the aspect of conflict. But the important thing is not to react, but rather to respond, because reactions create uh, even more conflict and even more issues. <laughs> And you can get, uh, as they say, hot under the collar. But it's in those moments you need to cool down, think about it, and maybe deal with it at a later stage, rather than to react. Because reactions, uh, enough said on that. I'm sure you know what I mean. It's important to respond and to respond wisely. And what is important is to keep looking at the end in mind. What are the goals? What are you aiming for? If that's clear in your thinking, you'll tend to respond more than reacting because you, you know what's at stake. You know that every individual matters. And if everyone is, as they say, firing on all cylinders, then you're going to achieve your goals as a team, as an organization. It's no good to lose it in a moment. And uh, so one has to be focused on that responding well and to be clear of how you're going to respond. So what is conflict? So I've written a few things down in my own experiences. The first thing is disagreements. So one can disagree on a matter. It could be a technical matter, whatever it is. And this is not necessarily a bad thing because disagreements can end up in the most incredible solutions. 
So that's just one thing, this disagreements, then disappointments, where perhaps through your leadership, it didn't go someone's way, or they didn't get this job, or they didn't get that promotion. And disappointments is something where we can mature as, as people, that how you process your disappointments can actually end up being a very good maturing process. And as leaders, we need to help our staff, our team, our organizations of how to deal with those disappointments in a proper way, because it can never go our way every single time. Uh, it's just impossible. It's <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't go our way, and sometimes it does. So that's another aspect of conflict. And then another big one is unmet expectations. When in your heart you expected something from someone or you expected that kind of leadership, and then inevitably you're going to find yourself in a conflicting situation. So those are the general initial sparks that lead to conflict. But further to that, which I can't go into now, is what can bring even more harm to an organization is if it goes into gossip, those that are hurting talk to others, and then you have a case against a leader. And it could be a valid case or it could be not valid. But at the end of the day, when it's a case, you know, you, you're dealing with a serious matter, whether you, you, you're wrestling now with this matter, and you're losing your unity that you're hoping for. And then there is a formal process to be undertaken, which I can't go through now, that whole grievance process, etc. But you wouldn't want it to get to that. As a leader, you need to be discerning and you got to be at that cutting edge the whole time. What is happening with your team? What's uh, those one-on-ones are important? What's going on? And you know, sometimes you just don't know what's happening in the home environment. You don't have to know all the details, but your staff member could be going through a divorce. There could be a death in the family. There could be some serious things happening that does have an effect. Uh, as much as we don't want it to, it could roll over into a work environment. So it's good to know if your staff is going through a very difficult time so that you can be sensitive to that and also help them, help them through it um, because they could be reacting to things because of what they're going through. So it's important to have a feel for that. Um, so here's another point um, is that to, as I'm bringing it further to very close to the end, there you are, don't worry, I'm nearly ending. I find conflict process goes through the following. First of all, as someone taught me, you have norming, then you have storming, then forming, and then performing. So in the beginning, we get to know one another. Then we have our storm, as it were, and then hopefully we outwork it. Then we can form, and then that bonding takes place. Then you can really perform. So what I tend to do is when I pick up conflict is I meet one-on-one, -on -one, and I uh, try and get it outside of our environment. And we just talk it through. And we talk it through and we try and resolve the matter. And try and, what I always do is put the vision before the conversation and say, that's what we're aiming for. That's what we're trying to achieve. And that's what I'm hoping for that individual where they could get to. So if you put that before them and you and your organization, you tend to outwork that conflict. You can seem to to wrestle your way through it because vision actually creates collaboration and camaraderie. If you can keep that, I know it sounds easy now, but if you can try that, it brings about a momentum. Then finally, um, if you get through that, then you have a whole lot stronger team. And these are the scenarios, if I can conclude. You either have a lose-lose or a win-lose or a win-win. And of course, the win-win is the better one. I mean, Lose, lose, you're all losing. So that's not going to help. A win-lose is also not ideal because then you've got a staff member that's carrying something and he's just kind of isolated, tends to isolate, and he just wants to get a job done and then go home. You don't want that. You want you want guys really going for it with you. And that's what you want, the win-win. So you gotta you got to kind of aim for that win-win the whole time. Um Guys, I've done a lot today. It's just gone a little bit more than that five minute. There's a lot more to be said, but thank you for the opportunity. And I hope together with myself, we can nurse our way through some tough 
tough things and charter our way through and get that unity and then get to what we're aiming for. So, Johan, thanks for that opportunity. Thanks, Adrian. Any questions from anybody? If you have a question, unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. Just two comments from my side, Adrian, while we're looking for someone who wants to ask a question. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, okay, I see two people have unmuted themselves. Let me give them an opportunity to, to, to ask a question first. any case, my comments. I, Adrian, first of all, I think that we should put all these talks of yours into uh, a one, uh, into a group and, and, and do a CPD seminar on it. Uh, think about it and let's talk about it off, off, uh, off record uh, after this maybe or tomorrow or whenever you have time uh, or when you have thought about it. I think we can, we can do a lot of good by doing a CPD uh, carrying webinar. And then, just as a matter for everybody who has people working under them, uh, as a leader, remember that people will forget what you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. So look for things to praise in, in, in colleagues and not to criticize. Uh, there are many ways to, to do things. Not your way is not, not necessarily the only right way. Thanks, guys. I'm going to share the screen now. And if you have any more questions, please do while I try and, and share the screen and to start our talk on um, registration. Okay, I can't see anybody now uh, <clears throat> raising a hand or anything. So I'm just going to go on and um, uh, with a, with a talk. Let's see if I can get this thing to full screen. That's better. Good. Johanna, um, I just wanted to just comment for a second on what you said. I thought it was very valid, actually. No, it sure. was a point that, okay, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. I just quickly wanted to throw this in. What you said was so true, was this aspect of dignity. Uh, to treat people with dignity when it comes to these things. So I just wanted to throw that one in. Thanks for commenting on that aspect of how you make people feel. Thanks. Thanks okay. Today we're talking about filling in the extra forms. Um, can, can everybody see the screen? Just can somebody just comment and tell me, can you see the screen? Waiting. Uh, Johan, I can see it. Eh? Okay, no if problem. You it, then everybody should be able to see it. Yes, you can see. Thanks. Good. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, how to fill in the forms is first of all, you have to download the documents from the EXO website. And there's quite a lot of documents that you can download that will help you. Obviously, you want to, to download the application form. That is a, is a huge form. It's more than 30 pages. I tried to, to, to copy some parts of it to put into today's presentation. It didn't want to work because it's a word form and it didn't want to take the heading with it. And in the end, I just gave up. So the required document, obviously, the application form. Um, policy on registration. Somebody is not muted. Please, please mute yourself. Um, policy on registration of professional categories and uh, competency standards for registration as a professional engineering technologist and processing of application for registration of candidate professionals. <clears throat> Those are some of them. There are more. The training and mentoring guide. The guidelines, those are the important ones. The training and mentoring guide for professional categories. For professional technologists, the guide to the competency standards for registration as a professional engineering technologist. Remember that one. And uh, R05PT and E17P 
PRO criteria and processes and professional engineering technologies guide to Somebody please, please mute yourself. Uh, because you're making a lot of background noise. Fikile, please mute yourself. Okay, before you finish the document, read the guidelines. Remember that. Make sure that you read it all and you understand the context. Fill in what is asked, not what you think they should know. Um, okay, now I've managed to, to mute the background noise. <coughs> Don't, don't make up your own way of how, they, how you think that the forms should be filled in. Fill in what is asked. And uh, don't just put there, I've got 15 years of experience. Uh, <clears throat> it doesn't work. The, the assessors don't know your 15 years of experience. You need to, to, to explain your experience. Remember, it's a peer review uh, process. If you apply for, as a professional to, to become a professional technologist, you are assessed by other professional engineering technologists. So <clears throat> you're not assessed, as I said earlier, by professional engineers or by technicians or by lawyers or whoever. You are assessed by people that's already been uh, registered as professional engineering technologists. Remember that the assessors are volunteers and they use their own time to do the assessment and to read through your the stuff that you wrote. And these people use all kinds of opportunities to, to read through your stuff. I remember when I was on the assessment panel, I used to sit on the airport before going to Cape Town or wherever and uh, read it on the plane or before boarding and uh, in the bus uh, on my way somewhere or something like that. And um, all kinds of other places with, which I won't go and tell you about now. You can use your imagination. <laughs> Remember <laughs> that these guys don't know your work. They only report, they only have your report to judge you by. So make sure that, you, that, you, that you, they can have a clear picture of what you're doing. Okay, first of all, there's three referee reports that you have to, to, you have to get three referees. We spoke about the referees last time. Uh, and the, the uh, uh, last time's thing will be up on the website soon. I haven't sent it in yet to be, to be put up, but I'll send it up out with, with this one. So the, the talks are all on on the uh, iPad website uh, and I will again put on the, the link on the iPad groups so that you can assess all the, the, the talks. I think this is the 13th one or something. In any case, <clears throat> uh, the, S, the registered professionals that are your referees, they comment on your engineering proficiency, your conduct and the delegated responsibility from personal knowledge. In other words, they comment on, on your on the outcomes, whether you are uh, considered to be uh, deemed to be proficient or not. So in other words, make sure that you don't get your biggest enemy to be your referee. That is an important point. Try and get someone that, uh, that, that will give you a good, um, a, a good uh, a referee report. Remember that the application form that you fill in, your, your communication ability and your ability to interpret uh, is judged by the way you fill in the application form. You get credit for membership of professional societies. 
it's not essential, but uh, uh, you get a, an extra discount for that and uh, uh, credit for uh, 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 other achievements that you have, uh, you, 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 you did get. So <clears throat> the experience requirements, you need to demonstrate the application of your engineering knowledge, your proficiency and your problem solving ability. Do not describe every project that you've done, but describe the type of work on the hand of take one of your best projects and describe the type of work you've done by that. Remember that engineering content is of crucial importance. That is what the assessors look for, the engineering content and the level of engineering responsibility that you've achieved in your career and in, in, in doing projects. Describe the stages of your career. In other words, how you've grown in your career. It's important to show that you started off as a student and as a young te technician or as a young technologist and that you were given more responsibility as you progressed to the stage where you were actually delegated full responsibility for your work. Remember that. If you've, if you've been working for 20 or 30 years and you're applying on, on the uh, alternate route, Remember that the last 10 years are the most important ones. Okay, remember to read and reread the guidelines. I cannot stress that en enough. You will see that I've put that sentence in a lot of times in this presentation because of the importance. People forget what is required. And that is why you start off by reading when you've, when you've You've been halfway through your, your draft, you reread it. When you finished your draft, you reread it. Make sure that you've done everything according to the guidelines. Before you hand in your application, you reread the guidelines again and think about whether you maybe have forgotten something or not. <clears throat> poor language gives a poor impression. Remember that. Have your, if, if, especially if English is not your first language, have your language checked by a person who is good in English. Uh, whenever I write reports, my wife used to be the, the, the editor for this IC magazine. So I always give anything of importance to her to edit before I hand it in anywhere, even many of the, the emails that I write, because poor language, spelling mistakes, and things like that give, uh, always give a poor impression. Remember that your application, uh, well, it used to be sent out a hard copy and it used to, 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 to be able to make good photostats. But remember that your application is sent out to people and should be of such a quality that the people can read. Don't use acronyms, don't use trade jargon, and don't write in capitals. Don't shout in your writing. Uh, make sure that you write properly. Engineers like to use capitals and capitalize a lot of words. I make that mistake myself. Uh, check through your stuff and take out all unnecessary capitals. And make sure that you don't use acronyms and trade jargon because the guys that are assessing might not be in the same firm or in exactly the same uh, area as you are where the acronyms are known. Explain the standards that you use, the extent of your design, especially the standards that you use in your design. And type in a legible font of more 10 or more. It mustn't be uh, illegible. I'm, I've, I've included an, an, uh, an example of how not to do it. This was many years ago. Uh, as you can see at the bottom there, it was 2005. But that was an extract of, of, of a, a, what's the name that I assessed, as I said, 15 years ago. Obviously, you don't want to, to be so fancy and make it difficult for the assessors to read because you wanted to get a, a poor result, you make the assessors upset. 
Okay, <clears throat> the organigrams is quite important. What you want in there, <clears throat> obviously, is the name of your, yourself, your registration category and job title. That goes for an educational qualification. That goes for whatever goes above you and below you and uh, beside you in your organigram. We don't want the whole company reduced to A4. I remember being on the, on, on the registration committee, those days when we had a registration committee, and someone applied from, from uh, ESCOM, one of the power stations. This guy took the A0 power station uh, uh, organigram and he reduced it to A4. I couldn't see where he was on this thing. So it was totally useless to myself or the other assessors. So you only want uh, <clears throat> the level above you so that the person can see, the, the, the assessor can see at what level is the person you, you report to. Also, they want to see at what level are the people that are working below you. And then to, to make sure that you make a good impression, you want to, to, to put the people that are working on the same level as you, one or two of them. And obviously, if you're working on the same level as one of the associates in the company, a professional engineer uh, or another professional technologist, you want to put that person in there. You don't want to put a person in there that is uh, not at, 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 at a high level. So make sure that you, you, you choose correctly. You don't have to put everybody in there. Just make sure that by the, your organigram, you show at what level you are working. <clears throat> Do not use shading to indicate yourself. Rather use a, 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 a heavy border on your own position there. And as I said, use the, the uh, formation, a format I showed there, like your, your boss above you, what his registration category is, PR Tech or PR Eng, uh, what he is, is he the executive director? And what qualification does he hold? Does he hold a, a master's or a PhD or does he hold a, a, a whatever, a BTEC or whatever? You see, that is what you don't want to put in. Nobody can see what, where you are and, 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 and uh, you don't want to put that kind of organigram in or something like that it is so, so shaded that you can't see where it is. It's just too much information. And then some piece uh, uh, put in here uh, under the director uh, in, 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 in just written in. It gives a very bad, uh, a very bad indication of who you are. Okay, provide concise, clear, relevant information. Don't put irrelevant stuff in there describing what other people did at other projects. If you say you attended the site meeting, why did you attend the site meeting? To do the braai. <laughs> Lots of people attend site meetings. The tea, the tea lady also attends the site meeting. Explain your involvement. Don't just say, I attended the site meeting. If you if you wrote the, 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 the minutes or you chaired the site meeting, then you say you chaired the site meeting. <clears throat> you, you were delegated to write the minutes. That's important. Don't provide whole books of designs and stuff. Your assessors don't have time to read through all this stuff. You can provide some um, examples of design, but if you provide examples of design, make sure that those examples are signed by yourself and signed by the person who checked it and signed by the person who takes the responsibility. Obviously, you can't sign it because you're not professionally registered yet. Don't include all your CPD certificates. Make a list of them. Remember, in your whole application, engineering content is king. In conclusion, Remember that the assessors only have your report to go by. They don't know what you've done. 
and they don't know whether you are this important person in the ruling party. You're not going to get to this, uh, um, registered because you're an important person in, 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 in the uh, municipality or whatever. You are going to be re registered on the basis of your, the engineering content of your work. Your application is a picture of you. That goes not only for your application, it goes for any job that you do. If you write a report to your boss and you just make, make a quick hand scribbled report, it's a bad picture of yourself. Take time, tidy it up, make sure that the picture that you provide to your boss or to anybody, even in an email, is giving the picture that you would like to see of, of yourself going out. Now, this other thing, blow your own trumpet. A lot of us went to Sunday school and were told not to blow your own trumpet, not, not to put yourself forward. Unfortunately, in this case, you have to. You have to show what you've done. You have to blow your own trumpet. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Don't... <clears throat> Don't embellish the stuff that you've done too much, but make sure that you say that I have been delegated responsibility to do that. Don't say we did this and we did that and don't describe the project. Describe your, your, your input in the project. Remember that. That's why, why I mean what I mean by blow your own trumpet. Keep to the guidelines. And again, as I said before, read the guidelines, read them again when you complete it, and make sure that you, 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 you paint a very nice picture of yourself. That's all for today. Thank you. Is there any questions? I will gladly try and answer and uh, take it from there. Jay, you've got, you, you, you're unmuted on Nyasa. Do you have questions? Please fire away. Sorry, you're on a, I'll, I'll mute myself. No problem. Come on, guys, you must have questions. Please feel free to ask. Unmute yourself. And uh, ask your question. I don't see anything on the chat either. Put me on. Yeah. Hello. Eugene, carry on, please. Okay, so wait. <clears throat> this we can might be you. a silly question. Forgive me if it is, but um, um, sure. So when you refer to the guidelines, it is these guidelines, which is included in the Word document, which you can download from Excel's website. So in, in other words, you, you get a couple of forms there after you get that guidelines. And then again, you get a couple of forms, which you need to fill out and then you get the guidelines are those the ones you're referring to yes as i said uh, uh, the ones there, there's a lot of um a lot of documents uh, supporting documents on the exo website uh, if you go to previous um uh, uh, talks actually i took those first two slides with the, with all the numbers of, of of reports i took that out of previous uh uh, talks. Those are the ones that you actually have to download and just read through and make sure. And as I said, some guidelines are in the application form document, but there are some over and above the application form. So no, it's not a stupid question. It's actually a very good question. And it's very important um, uh, to, 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 uh, to read the guidelines before you even start. I see somebody said here that he was uh, late joining. Yes, the, the recording, it is being recorded. And uh, 
the recording will go on the on the website uh, as well as the 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 um, the PowerPoint slideshow will go on the website. Mfundu, you you're unmuted. You have a question. Um, I'd just like to ask, in terms of the onanograms which you are likely to attach on your record, uh, if you've worked in multiple uh, projects, which one specifically would you uh, likely to attach on the report? Well, first of all, you go and look at your project. And as I said, you want to paint, paint a picture of yourself in the best way possible. You want to, you want to blow your own trumpet. So pick the, 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 the uh, project that will give the best um, the best view of what you've been doing and the level at which you're working. Uh, so pick that um, uh, project which will give, give will, will give the best, best picture of yourself. Thank you very much, sir. A pleasure. Hello, guys. You're welcome to ask. Surely you you don't have to only ask about what we spoke about today. You can ask anything. I'll try and answer. And if I if I don't have the answer, we'll talk about it next week. As I said, we we're, we're planning to actually uh, <clears throat> Chris uh, Chris um, Maynard, who is the IPED president and is an EXA assessor. He, he was asked by EXA on short notice yesterday, I think, or the day before, to do EXA interviews today, the whole day. So he couldn't be with us. And I had to, to um, quickly put together an a, 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 a talk for today and take his place. But he suggested that we do another one next week, or as usually we do these every two weeks, but we'll uh, put it on the iPad uh, chat groups when we will be doing the next talk. And uh, if it's next, next week or in two weeks time, it will also be on LinkedIn. I don't know where you all uh, got notice of this, but uh, probably uh, from the iPad groups. Please, um, any more questions? I put the Institute of Technologists of Professional Engineering Technologists is the organization for the that looks after the family of professional engineering technologists and other non professional technologists. We try and do everything to to uh, enhance the status of technologists and provide services to technologists. Obviously, we, we need uh, to have a membership fee for that. And if you're not a member, you're welcome to join as a member. Graduates get the first year free. Students uh, get free membership. And our, our membership fee for professional technologists, which is 525 Rand a year, enables you to get a discount from EXA, which is more than your 525. You actually have enough money to buy a, a, a six pack of beer with your change. And uh, unfortunately, not like uh, in, in days gone by when I always said you could still go and buy a bottle of whiskey with your change. The price of whiskey has gone up too much. <clears throat> we are presently looking at uh, trying to the, 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 some of the departments in the in in government in uh, the Department of uh, Environmental Affairs are writing um, regulations that write that say that that professional technologists cannot sign and only professional engineers we are fighting that just as a matter of interest for you for you for your uh, for you to know we are definitely actively uh, fighting that while we can and we have done that in the past uh, with success and uh, uh, when exa previously uh, published identification of engineering works. We, together with some other people, uh, went to the uh, competition commission and we successfully fought 
against writing out technologies. If you will unmute yourself, you, I see you have a hand up. Unmute yourself and you have a question. Please go ahead. Hi, Johan. Um, um, I think that's the topic that I also I was very interested in because in another um, um, WhatsApp group, there was um, something of that nature. And maybe um, as part, I'm, I, I know the, the, the actual um, virtual meeting that we are in is not for that, but can you, if it's possible, elaborate on that and, and, and why there is in now that uh, environmental affairs um, wants to take out their professionally registered um, technologies in terms of the designs, so that maybe uh, as well we can get uh, the same understanding as to what is happening. Well, basically, the Department of Environmental Affairs is um, is, is writing regulations for everything, and these regulations are setting out exactly how landfills and things like that should be done. So in other words, it's not even, um, uh, uh, you know, they, it's, it's so direct, it's, 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 it's not even broadly defined, it's clearly defined engineering work, which should be able to be done by professional technicians and signed for by te professional technicians, because it's all set out, you cannot go outside the guidelines. And they say they want to say that only professional civil engineers can 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 sign. So, unfortunately, not all professional civil engineers are qualified to sign. And we will be taking it up with EXA. We'll be taking it up with the department. We're working on it at the moment, and uh, uh, hopefully, we will be um, uh, successful in that. Eugene, you have a question, and there was a question about a company closing down. Please get as much si signatures from people that are uh, in the company, which you need for your registration, as you can, uh, as soon as you can, or try and keep in touch with those people if you can, even if they, uh, if, if they immigrate to to wherever a lot of guys go to Aussie and New Zealand nowadays and Canada and those places or the UK, try and keep in touch so that the person can sign for you when you actually have finished writing your report. Otherwise, um, you, know, you can get people from other companies to sign. Uh, and if you can't get anybody, you, you must provide a, uh, uh, a sworn affidavit that you have done this and this and this work. So it can be done. Eugene, please fire away. Um, I've got a two part question. Um, the first, the first question I, I want to ask is, so I am busy compiling my report and so on. And I am currently not registered as a candidate with EXA, is, is it something worth, worthwhile to do since I'm going to be done with my report in, in let's say three months time or so? Is it, is it worth it to register for as a candidate for only like three months? Is it a, a, is it a requirement? Uh, that is my first question. The second question is um, in terms of, of what you can sign off and, and, and cannot sign off, um, I, I find in, I find it interesting that which you have just said, and I had a similar discussion with one of our directors yesterday. So, what what you can sign and, and cannot sign off when you're a professional technician, professional technologist, and and an engineer, and then also certified engineer. Okay, also certificated engineers. You you. Uh... I, I presume is you meant. Uh, just don't call them certified engineers. They are. They will not take it. Take to that kindly. <laughs> um, you can sign off. Whatever your education and your uh, subsequent uh, work and and experience have made you competent to sign off for. In other words, you can't go beyond that, and that goes for 
technicians, professional technicians, professional technologists, and professional engineers. A, a professional electrical engineer cannot sign off for, for civil work, although it's done. Uh, it is not correct. And uh, if, 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 the, if something goes wrong, then that person will be liable. Uh, <clears throat> so it is, uh, you can sign off for what, what you are uh, uh, competent to do. EXA has now um, published the, the uh, identification of engineering work where everything is quite uh, well defined and uh, what you can sign off for and what not, what you can do and what not. They actually say in the, the, these documents that everybody that work in engineering must be registered within the next three years. Now, I cannot see how they're going to do it because they don't have enough assessors and uh, uh, people that can do interviews to register everybody, uh, all the profession, everybody that needs to be registered as technicians, technologists, engineers, certificated engineers in the next three years. I'm sorry. Uh, but let's see what happens. Um, so that is the... <clears throat> As far as that is concerned, the other question you had, I slips my mind now. Um, what the other question was was um, in terms of being registered as a candidate. Oh, um, look, yeah. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm busy. Mm. The, the registration as candidate is not. Uh, sorry, from Jan, you can speak. The registration as candidate is not essential. Eugene, you were, you, you went off the air there a bit, I think. Uh, <clears throat> in any case, uh, it is preferable but not essential, and it costs a lot of money. So, um, I'm not sure, but I think if you registered as a, as as a uh, as a candidate, the application fees for registration is a as a professional is, is, is lower. I'm not sure of that. Please check that on the EXA website. So, um, as I said, it's not essential, but it's a nice to have. Uh, it's not essential to be a member of a professional society or a voluntary society, but it is, uh, it is a good thing to have. And obviously you get a, a discount on your annual EXA fee if you are a member of one of the accredited voluntary societies like IPET, Institute of Electrical Engineers or Mechanical Engineers or Chemical or uh, SIC, the Institution of Civil Engineering. So all of those qualify, not only IPET. Only uh, IPET is one of the few whose membership fee is lower than the discount that you get. Uh, <clears throat> any other question? I see there's another few guys unmuted. TZ and Rodney. Hey, Eugene, morning. Carry on. Uh, I, I want to find out that, uh, for instance, in my case, I'm in, in the public sector. And then uh, in most cases, for me to at least get exposure, I was a uh, second That's what I requested to to go to the consulting uh, firm so that at least I can gain knowledge. And hence, it took me time uh, for me to register. I, I've done my, 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 my report uh, whereby I'm in a position maybe I can submit. Uh, I've got only two people who have uh, gone through my report. Uh, I don't know, you, uh, Johan, that I remember when we talk on the on our group that okay, you're busy, but you can also assist in yeah me in in the report, but it it will come as a call in any cost eventually. So I was wondering, is it possible that I can maybe send it through uh, so that at least you can have a look at it? My problem is that I have limited time to to go through people's reports, and the other problem that I have is that um, personally, I haven't been on registration for the last three or four years. 
So I'm, I'm a bit out of touch with the with the finer points of uh, yeah. of the, the 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 new system uh, with the with the exit level outcomes. So um, uh, I I cannot volunteer to do it for you. Uh, if 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 you can find someone who who has uh, who is uh, actually uh, doing assessments, good luck. Try and get someone to, to do that. Uh, otherwise, ask the question on on one of our groups, if or more than more than one of the groups, and ask if there's anybody that's willing to to read your report for you. Unfortunately, there are a couple of guys out there that's willing to do it uh, at a cost. Uh, obviously, uh, I don't do do it for payment, and uh, I, I frown upon other people doing it for payment, but. Um, there are people that that uh, that charge very dearly, and <laughs> so yeah, wow. I, I'd rather not comment about it any further. But as you can understand, I I'm not no, I do. I'm, I'm I not do. keen on 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 that people doing that. Uh, but ask the question if there's anybody that is uh, willing to go through your your thing for you, and uh, obviously. A box of chocolates when the person has done that will go a long way to 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 make the person happy you know yes uh, because you see the thing eugene the and uh, you know this extra uh thing it, it it was i mean will separate us from from the rest and i know sometimes it's it requires one's time and energy so it's better for me to do it because if with I mean I prolong say hey, let me wait let me wait I don't know the day it will take me uh, too much time as, as it did now so that's why I, I would like at least if there is anyone within the group that is willing to go through my my stuff and because all I want is for to find myself as a registered person you know well, I appreciate what you say. Um... I don't think there's anybody that's uh, on the group today that is willing to do that, that or that is uh, that is that can do that. Um, but uh, we can try and find somebody for you, uh, TC. Uh, no, thanks, thanks, Johan. Thanks a lot. And and also a comment on what you've said. You know, you say that you've been. Seconded to to to, to uh, obviously consulting companies and all that. You're very lucky to have been, but you're not necessarily. A lot of people. Uh, well, we've come across a lot of people on these discussions that people say that that they want to resign their job and go and work for a consulting company so that they can get some design experience and 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 so that they can register. You shouldn't be able. You shouldn't need to do that. If you are in a position where you're the, the project manager or something. And you, uh, or, or uh, on, on a construction site, and, and you have to build something or assess any designs that anybody else has done, make sure that you, that you know how to assess the, the, the designs and that you write it in your application that you've assessed the designs and that you have checked the person's, uh, the, the, the person's uh, uh, qualifications. Calculations, and uh, if you think that the design needs to be changed, that you have uh, discussed it with the person who's done the design, with a consultant, or whoever, and proposed mm -hmm. some some changes. And sometimes your your idea is a lot better, and uh, people will gladly accept it. But even if it's not accepted, then say how you have done that, and what you've done, and on what basis, what the technical basis, what the standards mm -hmm. were that you mm -hmm. assessed other people's design by and make sure that you uh, uh, put it across in your interview and as well as your application. Uh, <clears throat> Mfundu, I think you had a question or who was the other person who had a question? I think it's Mfundu. Uh, no. So sorry, 
I'm also unmuting myself and saying that my head is going to be answered. Okay, if you want to, to ask a question later, come uh, on, hello. Hi, 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 Johan, how are you? No, good. Um, so, um, yeah, I think, thank you. I'm not sure if you've covered this already, but I, I only logged in late. Um, I want to register with, <laughs> yeah, I want to register with, with, with EXA. Um, so I think it's a bit confusing between the candidate as well as the, the professional. What is the difference? Because, yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's an easy one. Too. I just want to understand explain. which one should I go for? And let, yeah, let, let me try and explain. Okay. Once you have um, okay. qualified at wherever you qualified, DUT or uh, uh, UJ or TUT or CPUT or whatever, you, you can then uh, immediately after that, yes. uh, if you, once you've got your um, certificate, apply for a candidate. Okay. Uh, once you, you feel that you are ready to um, and usually not before three years after your your qualification, uh, they expect EXA expects you to do three years of of of, of work, of engineering work before the, before you apply. Um, <clears throat> then then you apply for professional status. So in other words, yes, you are registered with EXA as a candidate, but it doesn't really mean much. You cannot sign anything off. Uh, you only can only sign off as a professional once you have registered as a professional and once you in other words have, have proven to uh to to your peers to the people who the assessors that you are uh, on the right level and that you that you are um that you've if you that you've got good practical experience uh to to apply as as, as a uh, as a candidate, you just need to, to prove that you have your, uh, your qualification. You supply your, your copy of your qualification and your name and your money and, uh, and Bob's your uncle, you get registered. But it's not so easy to register as, as, as a professional technologist. Obviously, the, one of the big things that you have to do is to pay the money that they expect I think that the money required for registration is, a, is, is, is a too much, but uh, that's my personal view. And uh, I don't think that it's, you should have to pay such a lot of money to get registered, but be that as it may. Uh, I see there's two people with, with hands up, Bulele, uh, Bulelwa and Ashil. I don't know who's gonna go first, please fire away. I think Bulelewa is uh, first. Okay, thank you so much, Say. Um, I just want to ask, I have a question here. I, I, I think this is my fourth year uh, working for a consultant, um, but um, I'm, a, I'm a technician. I'm currently busy with my BTEC, but um, most of the time I'm on site. I am doing the project management like the progress reports, I'm um, doing the meetings, but I'm more on site. I'm more like a resident engineer. So I wanted to know is it like, I've never done design before. I just take the design from the engineers and the technologists, but I'm not too sure if I would say that I have enough information to proceed with my registration. May you please advise? Thank you. Well, if you go through the guidelines, you're obviously uh, you're still busy with your BTEC, so you can't register as a professional technologist. You can register as a professional technician because you have more than three years. As far as designs are concerned, as long as you can prove that you that you have that you um, scrutinize and go through the designs and assess the designs of the people uh, before you build it, and make sure that it's that it's practical to build it. You, you obviously have, have come across uh, plans that 
that, that had to be changed because it was impossible to build it the way that the architect or the engineer had designed it. So uh, you, you need to be able to prove that you, that you have assessed and uh, uh, maybe done, done, check the calculations and things to, to, to make sure that the, that the design is feasible. Uh, that is what you need to, to prove. Uh, before, uh, so you don't have to be on on, on a, a consultants, and, and you know in a consultancy. I hope that answers your question. Yes, so thank you so much, sir. Ashil. All right. Uh, thank you. I'm doing PhD currently, but I'm deciding to start on an internship with some company. So I just wanted to ask what level would be ideal for me to, to apply for? Do I have to become a candidate first or I can jump straight to applying for being a professional, um, uh, maybe technologist as I'm doing the internship okay. in uh, industry? Okay. Tell me, you say you're doing a PhD. Have you been doing it full time or part time? I've been doing it full time. Okay. <clears throat> well, you, you need to, to go through the guidelines and check whether you actually think that you, you have, uh, the, that you can uh, fulfill all the outcomes that, that is required for registration. So that you have to, to be very critical of yourself and, and check. And if you think that you are, um, you know that you you have fulfilled all the the guidelines then you can apply you don't have to apply as a as a candidate first uh, as i said earlier <clears throat> but make sure that you that you fulfill all the all the guidelines and um, obviously as a, a, a in your studies you have if, if you have done some uh, project management and some uh, you know, buying of stuff for your studies and all that uh, going out on, you know, not just small stuff, but a bit uh, writing documents mm -hmm. to for, for publications, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and that kind of thing. Uh, then, then you should be okay to 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 apply. Uh, all right. But as I said, you you have to to make very sure there. Okay. No, well, you've still got your hand, hand up. Is Thank you. Old hand, or is it? Uh, are you uh, just forgot to put it off? Thank you, uh, <clears throat> Eugene. You wanted to ask? Um, yes, um, um, I know that you guys have covered this in, in the previous meeting, but I, I just want to make sure that I understand this 100% correct. So in a situation where, where people have, have been studying part-time, like in my situation, I've been, I've been working for a company now for the past 13 years. Um, I started off as a draftsman um, uh, and then uh, I, I did my national diploma through, through UNISA. This was now four years ago. And then I did my BTEC, which I just completed this year. But I've been working here at a at a fairly senior level for for I would say the last six years or so. Um, is it possible for me to proceed and, and directly register as a professional technologist, or would you advise that I that I wait a little bit longer? Eugene, uh, quite frankly, I'm not very sure. Either way, I remember that Chris said the other day, yes, you can. You need to, to prove that you fulfill all the, the outcomes. Uh, once you can do that, you should be able to, to, um, uh, to register because you've been studying part time. Uh, so in other words, the, the three year rule only applies to full time study. As I, uh, as I said, personally, uh, it really depends to a great extent on the people that you're going to uh, who's going to assess your application, and uh, um, 
and, and, and do your interviews. My experience of when I was uh, at, uh, on the registration, we used to have a, a committee that met once a month and we went through probably 15 or 20 applications as a group. You would always find some people who are very uh, tight on exact, exactly keeping to the, to the rules and some people that say no, but this guy qualifies, although he doesn't exactly qualify, doesn't fulfill that uh, time rule or this or that or the next thing. So it, it's really, unfortunately, to some extent, uh, a, a person, a person driven process, although the process that EXA uses now is less personal driven, personality driven as what the process used to be when I was on, when I was actually chair of the civil committee there. <coughs> um, so, uh, but, you know, we used to try and, 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 and apply our minds. These days, people are, tend to, to be very strict according to, to guidelines, some people more than others. So I cannot really say to you, give you a definitive answer there. Uh, as I said, Chris said, fine, you can, you can apply. I remember that clearly. And uh, I remember it clearly because I sat here and I thought, I hope it's going to work. So, so yeah. All right. No, uh, no, that is fine. If, if, Understand. If you apply for professional technician, then obviously, then, then you fulfill the requirements hands down. And uh, yeah. uh, then that shouldn't be a problem. So if your boss is willing to accept that, and uh, just want you to be professionally registered, then I would go for that. But uh, um, yeah, good luck. All right. Well, in, if if there is no real limitations on me as a as a structural okay, in terms of what I may and may not sign off of in when I compare a technician as opposed to a technologist, then I may as well take the safer route, register for a technician, wait a couple of years, and then register as a technologist. And then I can just go ahead and sign off my own work right away. Yeah, I, I, you know, as I said, you should be able to, to sign off on what you, your education and your education uh, and, and your BTEC as well goes with that, as well as your experience made you uh, uh, competent for, and uh, from what you say, uh, I, I, in, in that sense, I agree with, with Chris when he said, if you're competent to to be a, a, a registered as a technologist, then EXA should be able to register you as a technologist. So, as I said, I cannot give you a definitive answer on that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, hello. You have your hand up. Yes, uh, Johan. Hey, Sorry, I uh, lost connection the other time. Yeah. Um, I think my last question would be um, I currently reside in Lesotho and I work in the brewery. So I don't know if there is, um, how does EXA still be able to, to take me in? And then, yeah, how do you treat people who are not South African citizens? Are you working in South Africa? I work in Lesotho um, at the brewery. Well, as far as I know, EXA, well, you don't have to be a South African citizen to be registered with EXA. I think if you okay. can prove that you, uh, you are working on the right level and you are working in, 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 in the, the content and uh, level is correct, then you should be able to register, uh, to the best okay. of my knowledge. I, I, I know that we've registered many uh, people from other countries um, and with, exp with, with qualifications from other countries. Where did you study as a matter of interest? I studied at uh, TUT. Oh, I did okay. my diploma and uh, BTEC at TUT. You BTEC at? TUT, TUT, both are TUT. So you, you studied yeah. with Jacques and those. Uh, 
and 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 Jones. Jones is uh, he's on the EXA panel. So if you so you you should know Jones Molasani, and you should have his contact detail. You should be able to ask that question to him because he he's a, one of the kingpins there at EXA now, and uh, he should be able to answer your question very clearly. But I don't see any problem, especially since you studied in South Africa. Uh, so if, if, if right, you have thank you. Uh, professionals, exa, exa registered professionals that can can um, act as referees, you shouldn't have a problem. So I can get somebody because now I'm working in a global company. So I can get somebody within the company, even though they are in South Africa, because I think in my country now, uh, I may not have people who can reference me uh, within the company because yeah. But you know, maybe in South Africa, there are some guys uh, in SAB that I maybe can yeah, reference me. That still work. You see, as long as the, your referee is professionally registered, okay. it doesn't have to be registered with uh, EXA. In other okay. words, a lot of people are registered with, um, with, with the British system, you know, as, as, as in, incorporated and chartered engineers. And their signatures okay. are accepted uh, as referees, and they. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so that is uh, one way to to go. To uh, and and yeah, and the person, if he's registered with EXA, so much the better. But he doesn't have to be registered with EXA, but he has to be uh, professionally registered. So okay. Oh, it makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good pleasure. See, it's two o'clock. A lot of people want to go back to work, seems like it. Uh, but we still got enough people on. I'm, I've, I don't have to go back to work. I'll just have to go and make myself some lunch after this. So, so you're welcome to ask some more questions. Hendrik, you've been watching the whole show, yeah, and we, you've you've been the only person uh, apart from me who's got his his, his video on. Uh, do you have a question? Are you still muted, Hendrik? And I see Jay has a question. Yes, you on. Um... I'm sitting here with the, the registration forms for technologists, the EXA forms, and I'm seeing here on page 13 and 15 that there's a training. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I've muted the background noise. Okay, and they, they, there's a part that, that you must fill in for training experience report. And there's a part that you must fill in for training experience outline. What is the difference between the two? Well, as I said, you know, I've changed the system since I've been there and I can't tell you that exactly. Let's ask that question on the, on the iPad groups and let's get people like, Chris, to, to answer that question for us, hopefully next week. Okay. Jay, you've got your hand up. Sorry, I'm just going to put it down. You're still unmuted. Do you have a question, Jay? You're welcome. I just asked you that question now. I've, I've just asked you about the, the, the outline and the report. Oh. Uh, well, as I said, I'm not sure the question that, that uh, Hendrik asked whether how to answer that. And I don't want to give you a, a wrong answer. So I'd rather refer you to to Chris or one of the other guys. Adrian. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. 
Thanks, Jay. Sorry. No, no problem. Adrian, you've got your hand. Hi, Johan. I, um, I think it's already been mentioned, but uh, it will be great for Chris to give us feedback because I also recall him mentioning this, the aspect of prior to your qualification, for example, BTEC, you've, you've operated at a technologist level. Would EXA consider that as part of the experiential report or as one of the three projects that you could include it? That will be, I think, quite important to clarify because I think a lot of people are asking that question. So maybe Chris can just fill us in. But I do recall him saying that for, for guys to put that info in, it does count. So I'll be interested to know so I can communicate to others. I think you need to indicate at all times at what level you've been working. So uh, even if you were still studying towards your BTEC and you would, you, would, you would delegate at full responsibility for your work because of your proficiency, then, um, <clears throat> then uh, obviously it, it shows and it, it will count for you. I've often made the re re remark that <clears throat> your, aptic, your, your, your qualification is a toolbox uh, that you work with for the rest of your life. And uh, people with different qualifications have different toolboxes. If you, if you have a diploma, you have a, a basic toolbox. And then you go and do a BTEC after that, and then you add to your toolbox. All eight, eight subjects that you study are actual uh, improving your tools on, on those, on, on, on those, in those areas. And if you, if you studied at uh, traditional universities and you have a, a four-year BS, a B -Eng degree, then obviously you have a slightly more uh, fancy toolbox. But five years and 10 years down the line, it depends on how you've applied your tools. Some guys with, 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 um, with very minor tools have, have updated their tools and have used them and had learned to use them to great, uh, um, to great effect, where some guys with very fancy tools don't know how to use them and can't use them because they didn't apply uh, their knowledge. And, and the other thing, obviously, is a lot of students study to pass the exam and not to understand the concepts. Now, if you understand the concepts, you can apply those concepts in practice. If you only study to pass the exam, you don't understand the concept and you can't apply it in practice and you can't use those tools. So um, it is, it's just students don't realize that when they just study to, 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 to pass the exam. And I mean, personally, there's a couple of exams that I also just studied to pass because I couldn't see that I was ever going to use it in my life. And actually, in, in, in all the years that I had I'd been with Transnet for 38 years, I never used those tools. So, uh, but I, I, I actually, uh, some of the other tools I used to great effect and I, uh, if I can say it myself, became a, became a world expert in some aspects, uh, which I never actually uh, was taught at, at uh, Technicon, but which I picked up uh, along the line. Uh, so yes, use your toolbox, make sure that you understand the, the concepts and uh, that's the way to, to go um, <clears throat> to, to make the, the biggest impact as a professional. Any other questions? Mpumalelo, you, you have a question? I see you looking at us or your, your, your what's the name is on your... <laughs> Guys, if there's no more questions, then we... Oh, Tandu, you have a hand up or no? No, sorry, it's not a hand up. It's my, it's my pointer that's on your, on, your, um, on your name there. Any other questions? If there's no more questions for today, as I said, we, 
maybe going to have another session with Chris next week. Um, Afekile, you've got a question. Uh, yes, after not going to say. You still got your hand up. Yes, yes, I still have my my hand up. Yes, what I wanted to ask. Um, yes, I'm looking uh, for one of these uh, state-owned companies, um, uh, Transnet, as a as an engineering technician. Um, but I've just, um, I've, 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 I'm, uh, actually, I've obtained my PTEC in 2015. But uh, I was quite touched when when you indicated that we work for Transnet as well. As we understand that uh, yeah, we work as a technician. There's no kind of technologist work. Uh, so basically, you work as a technician, then thereafter maybe you can become a manager. So I need to find out now. Since um, I've, 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 I've been a tech, I've been a, tech, I've been a candidate, in fact, uh, since 2013, if I remember correctly. But now I want to register as a, as a, as a, as a technologist. Can I go for a technologist, or you advise me to go for the, as, a, as, a, as a to register as a technician? I'm still looking as a technician. I appreciate your situation. <clears throat> Uh, because I just remember when I was with Transnet um, technicians, there was a there was a very definite glass ceiling where you could go, uh, <clears throat> but um, it depends on the on on the uh, responsibility that we used to be uh, delegated. A lot of us could uh, register as professional technologists, and some people couldn't. So you'd have to look at your own situation, uh, what you've been delegated and look at the, the out, extra outcomes carefully and, 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 and judge whether, whether you think that you actually, uh, um, whether you, whether you, what's the name, those, those outcomes, whether you, whether you have reached those outcomes. Uh, so it is, um, uh, it's just not so easy to give you an answer. At, at, sorry, at, at what department did you say you were working? The yes, standard freight rail uh, payway, payway, payway department. Yes, freight rail. Well, I've got a, yes, a few freight. few friends there that uh, that that are registered. That um, that maybe we can ask to 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 have a look and see and and and, and have a talk to you. Uh, on that, if you if you contact me afterwards, then we can um, we can see if we can what we can do to 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 ascertain what you should be be doing. No, it's fine. Thank you. Adrian, you you wanted to talk. Yeah, sorry, Johanna. I just wanted to double check something. I understand that there are interviews that take place, as you know, Chris is doing one today. Is that part and parcel of the process? Or are there some that don't go through the interview process? Well, in my time, we, we looked at the application and if we, we considered the guy to be uh, registrable, then we would register him and not interview him. If there were questions, we used to interview. Today, the system is different. <clears throat> If, if they look at your application and they think that there are some shortcomings in your experience report, then they will give you an experience interview and, 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 and talk about the things that they try and find the, the, the things that they think are lacking if you to see, are you lacking or, or not? Uh, <clears throat> but you don't necessarily get an experience report, but you definitely get a professional interview everybody gets interviewed um, <clears throat> to to register as a professional technician or a te professional technologist uh, where they will look through your whole application and uh, <clears throat> don't be don't be fooled don't write other guys experience in there they'll catch you out in the interview they ask you a few questions it's usually very very easy to catch someone else out if um, if, if he has uh, written some stuff there that he didn't actually do himself, because they'll ask you about uh, most of the aspects that you have covered. So, uh, and, and, and there's a tendency 
of people to 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 use the reports that of people that have actually uh, registered. Please be careful. Uh, it's it's not ethical, first of all, and uh, <clears throat> you have to face yourself in the mirror. But some people have very foggy mirrors, so. <laughs> Um, be careful of, of but, but you will be interviewed and um, in the interview obviously if you have a very important position don't think that you are talking down to these people they just have to, to quickly uh, uh, to register you if you're in the interview you talk to people that are your peers that are on the same level as you as what you uh, aspire to be and um, if you talk down to them, you're definitely going to be uh, not be registered, and um, don't be scared of them either. They are people just like you, and they will discuss with you the stuff that you've written. Like you will discuss with your colleagues over tea, or with even if you or, or, or you would discuss with your boss uh, in a discussion, not in a. Uh, uh, in a, in a, in a uh, uh, bad way. So these guys are trying to ascertain that you are registrable. They're not trying to shoot you down, but if you were um, uh, writing things that you didn't do, then they will most probably catch you out. Tandu, you've still got your hand up. Um, hi, hi, you are. Carry on. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Um, my question is, um, I, 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 I've got a BTEC and I studied with UNISA. And then now I'm doing my PNG tech honors. Um, I only started working in 2019. So I just wanted to ask, um, since on my PNG tech honors, I'm also doing some um, toilet assignments and, and research assignments. Is it possible to use those when I register for my for my extra PR tech? I, I would say that all education adds to your toolbox. Um, <clears throat> because all that stuff that you're using, that you're learning there, you are actually applying in your job. Uh, one way or another, it makes you a better uh, engineer or technologist or technician. It, it, it's, it, all, all education is, is definitely uh, of, of great value. Uh, I want to use my son as, a, as an example. He, <clears throat> he studied in, in, in uh, overseas and he got a PhD and then he decided after a couple of years, no, no that field is not for him. And he, he was falling around a bit because he couldn't get a job locally and he, he did all kinds of things. And the job where he is now as a lecturer at one of the universities, that experience and that stuff that he learned at other places that had no, no, uh, um, um, there was no part of his, of his second qualification, uh, still makes him and uh, enables him to, to, to be a much better lecturer and in a field that that, no, that very few other people are, are able to lecture in civil engineering. So uh, all education will be to your advantage. Okay. Um, another question is um, in terms of referees and, and, and the mentor, would I use my CEO as my mentor or my referee since he's the one who is my employer? I, I didn't hear clearly. Is your question whether you can use your mentor as your referee? I'm saying, is it possible to use my CEO as my referee? Yeah. Or my mentor? Or as a mentor? Yeah, you can use your manager or your CEO as a mentor. Um, he might not be an engineer or a technologist, but he would be able to teach you a lot of, of the work that you need to be able to do. And uh, <clears throat> the only, only requirement is that your referees must be extra registered 
as either professional engineers or professional technologists. So um, <clears throat> all must be registered as professionals. <laughs> I see, I see you're, you're unmuted. Uh, do you want to ask a question? No, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm just, I just got in and I'm just listening. Okay. Unmute. To catch up, to catch up on the discussion and then maybe I'll have a question. Okay, I understand where you are. <clears throat> uh, unless you have a question, just mute yourself because it causes background knowledge, uh, back, background noise. And oh, okay, sorry, I didn't see that. Guys, if you don't have any more questions at the moment, then, then we'll have to, to, uh, to wait until next week. Oh, somebody asked for the contact details for the iPad WhatsApp group. Please send me a WhatsApp at um, 073-336-2471. I'll put a type message here. Type message. iPad. There it is. Um, <clears throat> I might might not put you uh, on the WhatsApp group immediately, uh, but yeah, I will pick it up. Yeah. I've got two telephones. The one is the iPad phone, <laughs> which those things go to, and the other one is my is my personal phone. And I don't answer the I don't answer the iPad so, uh, if it rings because it's usually not with me. Ten <laughs> minutes, I will pick it up. And add you to the groups. We've got three types of groups on the iPad. Uh, <clears throat> on iPad, one is the general iPad group for all members, where all technical oh, discussions okay. can happen. And um, then there's the oh, registration okay. advice group, where uh, <clears throat> you can ask all kinds oh, of questions okay. on the registration. Yeah, and then there's a oh, looking for if all the where the most people are, are member of. Uh, people who are looking for jobs or looking for new jobs or students that are looking for jobs or that kind of thing. So I, I probably have upwards of seven or 800 people on, on those portals. Uh, some of it is on Telegram and some of it's on WhatsApp. So wherever you, um, <clears throat> I try and put you on both actually nowadays. So Avikili, I see you've got your hand up. Is that an old hand or do you have a question? Unmute yourself. Oh, okay. Um, yes, 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 sir, I've got, I've got one more. Yes, thank you, sir, for this opportunity. I've got the one more last question. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to check because I, I started to, to, to do the report, um, the Excel report, um, but I wanted to check, is it necessary for me to recopy the information and post it on the new or, or on the latest uh, on the latest application form for, a, for registration as, as a candidate? Or must I? My question is: Can I must must I move the information to the new to the latest form, or can I use the form that I've, or that I've already have the information on, which is uh, that form C C one C one point one, which is not necessarily one hundred percent the same as the, the new one. Forms. So please copy it there. But if you if that form is signed, and you cannot get that person to to sign the new form for you then obviously add it in and say, I can't get this person, the person has died or he's, he's emigrated or, or uh, something like that. And I can't get him to sign, uh, here's the signed form. Uh, although the, the information is also on the new form uh, and then you refer on the new form to the old form that you've uh, attached. <coughs> Masizi, you've got your hands up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, uh, my my question is that uh, I just started a new project and the, it's not really complete yet, but I've seen some challenges or things that I'm going through with that project, and I feel it's better suited for my report as a technologist. Is it okay for me to report on the project that hasn't been complete yet? 
Yes. Look, you, you report on what you're doing. How you, you report on, on the engineering content of the work that you're doing. And you can say that the project's not finished yet. You, it's, it's in process. And maybe the job, the, the, maybe you, 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 you submit your application and three weeks later or, or two months later or whatever, you, you go for your interview and then the project's completed. Then you say, yeah, this project is now completed or no, that pro project is still not completed. You, you, all, all you need to do is to say, this is the situation. But you don't want to, to, to write a report on every project. Uh, you want to pick the best project that you have if you've done many projects that will give you the best chance of registration and you, and you, you report on the type of work. You say this project, you've done this and this and this, but you, on other projects you've done that and in other projects you've done that because you don't do all the same work of all the outcomes in the same project. You can refer to more than one, one project. Okay, thank you. That's perfect. Okay, guys, if there's no more questions, <clears throat> thanks a lot for joining us today. And for staying with us, I see a lot of people have stayed with us and we haven't lost a lot of people after two o'clock as happens many times. Um, so um, thanks a lot for being with us today. And uh, you've got the WhatsApp number. You can, you're welcome to ask me questions on that. And if I can't answer you, I will refer you to someone who can answer you. Uh, as I said, we at IPET is here to serve you and to help you. And uh, please tell other people of, of, of these um, discussions and uh, get them to, to join you. Even if they're not members, they are welcome to, um, to be part of it. Even if they are, uh, have other qualifications like uh, four year degrees, a lot of people uh, or, or people who only have a diploma or a, a national certificate in the N6 and those diplomas, we're all welcome to be part of this discussion. Uh, but as I said, this discussion uh, centers around professional technologists, but if we can answer a question on, on any other matter, we try and answer if we can. So thanks a lot for joining. And if there's no more questions, then I'm going to call it a day. Hope to see you again next week or the week after. We will let you know and we will share the the the, the um, we'll share the link as we as we've done for today. Have a good day. Have a good um, rest of the week and have a nice weekend. Stay safe and uh, always remember to to make the best of everything and give your best. Go the second mile and it will count for you in the end. Joan, sorry, sorry, Joan. Joan. Yes, it's easy. Um, uh, just, it's just a reminder that uh, please don't forget if you could uh, find uh, the one that could assist me, I would appreciate it for my I submission. Will try. All right. You've got my contact detail, remind me because I'm, I will need reminding. All right, I'll remind you on the group, it's fine. Okay. Thanks. Hi, Johan. I don't mind to be reminded many times because I'm a bit overextended as far as stuff to do. And uh, uh, sometimes things slip my mind. And uh, so uh, I, don't, I don't take exception if you remind me of something that I promised to do and I haven't done yet. Tandu, did you want to add something? No, I was just going to tell you that I didn't get your number, your WhatsApp number. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear clearly. I'm saying I was just going to tell you that I didn't get your WhatsApp number, if you can oh. provide it. No, I, I put it up there. Didn't it's you? Not, it doesn't appear. <laughs> okay, I'll just read it out again. It's 073. 073. 336. 
seven one. All right, thanks. Good. Thank you. And thank you for all the thank yous. I really appreciate it. Okay, guys, I'm going to end the session. Goodbye and good luck. <laughs>